Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in the last video we talked about one optimization technique known as data skipping and in this video we will talk about another optimization technique known as caching. Right? When I talk about the caching, the first question again comes in my, my mind, right? The journal which we ask, right? Which technology provide this optimization? Is it Spark? Or is it a data, delta table? Right? So basically, you can have this optimization method with Spark as well and with delta table also. So they, both the technology provide caching mechanism. Okay? Now, the mechanism is provided by both the technology, right? But their behavior is different little bit. Okay? When I say behavior, not the actual outcome, but the way we generally use it, right? So the way of implementation, the way of internal working is different for both the uh, technologies. Now, our second question is, when to use caching? Is it a right optimization technology uh, technique or it's a read optimization technique so basically it's for query retrieval read operation basically you can think of okay so this is for query retrieval or you can think of like uh, if you wanted to perform some computations right computations right on the cache data on a, on a, on a certain data sets right you can use it right so who provides caching caching mechanism both the technologies when to use it for query retrieval or for computations okay now let's talk about the differences right let's let's talk about the spark how spark optimization works okay what wh like how it is different from the delta table one so in spark the this cache optimization is known as general purpose optimization general purpose why we call it general purpose, right? Because you can use this particular technique, right, with the data frame, right? It doesn't relate with the data, data formats, right? Like maybe you have Excel sheets, you have JSON, Delta, CSV. So you are reading different type of files, right? But end of the day, you are creating a data frame, a data frame, right? So once the data frame is ready, right, on top of this, you can use cache. How to use it? You have two methods given by the Spark, which by which you can use it. One is df.cache and the second one is df.persist. Uh, right? These are the two methods by which you can explicitly use cache. Why I am why I emphasis on explicitly, right? Because if you wanted to leverage the cache tech mechanism right here, you need to explicitly mention this, right? You need to explicitly call these functions, okay? The fourth one is I can think of as basically where exactly it stores the data. It stores the data on basically memory. When I say memory, RAM and the disk, both. And you can configure the size, like how much size of memory you wanted to keep it for cache data or how much memory you wanted to keep it for cache data in case of disk also. So you can configure this memory size also in the Spark, okay? And uh, whenever you are dealing with the delta tables, right, it won't work, basically. If you are reading directly the delta table in, and if you try to query that uh, on, on top of delta table, right, it doesn't work much, uh, I mean like it's let, less efficient basically I can think of, I can say that, okay. So it basically work with the non-delta workloads, right, basically the data frame, that's it. And if anything changed in the data frame, right, you need to use again recaching. Okay, recaching will be required in case data data frame change. Okay, again you need to cache it. Okay, I hope you got it. Okay, now if I talk about the delta table once, right? 
these this in the delta table the cache mechanism given by the delta table right it is specifically for the delta tables not for other formats not for the data frame and all right it is for the delta table itself okay now obviously it it works on the files right the delta files basically right and uh, it is it is basically used when you wanted to uh, use some kind of repeated queries like let's say you wanted to retrieve the data where the country is us right so you are using this query very frequently or the customer wanted to use this query very frequently right that's where you can use this cache mechanism in case of delta tables right now as i said in the spark it is explicitly you can use it right i mean you need to ex explicitly define these methods and use it right but in case of delta table it is implicit based on cluster based on cluster and it is explicit as well why i am saying explicit as well right for few of the clusters this is not enabled in by default right so you need to go and enable with the help of one configuration we will talk about the configuration okay now uh, the next part is right as i said right where does it store the data again in case of delta again it will also store in memory as well as disk so storing point of view it is specific memory and disk in both the cases okay and here you don't need to recache it anytime right as soon as you query it you don't need to recache it i mean like by default delta table keep uh, adding the caches right and as and when required it will remove auto remove cache okay it is an auto feature and here you need to explicitly free the memory how you will explicitly free the memory you need to use one function called unpersist on the data frame so once the data frame you cache it you did some computation on top of it now after certain time you don't need it so it's better to uncache it unpersist it right so this is the difference between the spark and the delta table now what i'll do right i'll show you first of all i will talk about the delta table caching first okay let me switch over to the notebook okay so before going there uh, i have written one point here right it is implicitly enabled for based on some cluster configurations so let's talk about those cluster configuration first okay so if you see here i have this cluster which i'm using right if you see the worker nodes here and we will talk about only worker nodes right basically cache works with the worker nodes you can use driver also but generally it works with the uh, worker nodes right it's not with the driver nodes so what happened here okay yeah so if i show you the worker nodes right if you see here we have different type of uh, clusters right general purpose with delta cache accelerated it means by default the cache is enabled for these particular worker nodes if you go down you have another general purpose but for this one we don't have cache enabled so if you use any of these clusters the cache by default the cache which is enabled will not be there for general purpose std again not enabled for memory optimized delta cache enabled yes so there are different type of clusters or the nodes right or the worker nodes which are there right and it depends on those worker nodes if you have selected any of these the cluster, the, uh, the by default the the cache will be enabled now let's go and check the uh, notebook right how it works so this is one of the data set right which is given by the data bricks right i'm just checking if it is there or not it is there it is of six, 600 something mb and i'm reading and i'm creating a data frame out of it it holds the data of a uh, aeroplane right i'm basically not the aeroplane i can say the airlines right uh, like where the airlines is running what time it's going from where it's going which air, which is which, i'm mean, like from which country it belongs to right all those things are there the carrier and all right now if you see if i run this command right by default it is true right 
because I have used the same question, the one which is cache enabled, right? Cache accelerated, you can say. Then it is true. By default, it will be true. If it is not, you can make it true. How? With this command. Where is that? Sorry. False, it is there, right? So if I use false, okay, now if I run this command, Spark, Databricks, IO, Cache enabled, false. Because I ran the false. If I wanted to keep it true, I can make it. So I can configure it, right, based on the configuration. So even though if you use some other worker which are not cache uh, optimized, right, you can use that cluster, but you need to, after that, you need to configure this uh, configuration, right, to true. You need to enable the cache for that particular cluster. Once you enable it, it will allow you to cache the data also. Okay? Now, let me clear everything and I will rerun this notebook so that you will get some understanding. I'll remove all the states and everything. Okay? Everything is removed now. What I'll do? Okay, reconnecting. So what I will do? My bad, I ran everything, I think. Dropped. Let me stop everything. Okay, everything got stopped. Let's run the first command first. And I will show you where the data is getting cached, okay? Now I'm reading this data set. Okay, I'm reading the data set. I'm not reading the data, first of all. Remember it, okay? It's just the data, CSV. It's not a data table. So if I if I wanted to show you any cache here, if I click on this, there won't be any cache, right? IO will be free. So if you see here, Okay, it is taking the previous ones. Let me let me stop the cluster and restart it. Then I'll show you. Okay, I'll pause the recording for some time. Okay, so now I restarted this cluster, right? I'll run it again. So I'm. Uh, Okay, I'm just running this command again to showcase you which file you are trying to use. Okay, what is the size? Okay, this is the size, this is the file name. Now let's run it again. So here I'm just reading a CSV file. And last time, right, when I didn't restarted the cluster, when I clicked on that, we saw that in the IO, it was showing some data being cached, right? So let's see now. Let it complete. It will take some time. Yeah, it's over. Let's see. Stages. Not stage, storage. In the storage, if you see the I.O. is completely free. See, there is no data at all. Okay. Now, the data is not there. The cache is completely free. I wanted to check if the cache is enabled or not. Let's see. Switch so true. Cache is enabled. Okay. So, what I will do first, I will keep it, I will make it false. I don't want it to store something in cache. So let's keep it false. Done. Now if I run it, you will see the cache is false. It means you will not be caching anything. Now I wanted to write the data into a table. And if the table is already there, I'm just overwriting it. Let's run it. So since the cache is enabled, I'm not caching anything. Remember. Okay. So I'm writing, so while writing, cache doesn't work, right? I mean, like it won't work here, at least. Anyways, we are not caching anything. It will take some time. It's done. Now, I'm going to retrieve some information from this, this table, right? Let's run it. So this is the first time I'm trying to fetch the information from this table. Okay. Let's see what it does. 
is it cachets anything or not see the cache is still free okay what i'll do to cross check it i will rerun this query again i rerun it again let's check again one more time i'll go to storage and i'll see the cache is nothing is there right but we see estimated size of repeated data is 15 mb something but nothing is being cached okay and this time i'll show you one more thing okay apart from this cache i will show you like from where the data is getting read so if you see associated sql query 30 so if i click on this 30 and if you click on expand all the details i wanted to see all the details of this query plan i'll go down scan spar park is park catalog okay it is checking this table and if you see here there is one configuration or one key file system read data so from where the data is getting read from file system there is no cache okay once the data is started reading by cache you will see this file system read data size time everything should be zero okay and you will see something here called cache read cache write something here okay but currently since the cache is disabled you, you don't see anything here right so what i will do now okay so without cache we checked let's enable this property now cache let's run it true now the first time i am going to run this query now because this is the first time we are running it right so what it will do it will read this file and it will store this data to the cache now i am not explicitly asking him to cache it right but i just configured it then if i click again and this time i'll go and check the io is there anything cached yes you see that something is cached here you see okay so they cached 15 mb data which is a compressed data remember okay so it is using the feature of compression as well but the spark doesn't use compression feature okay this is another difference which i missed and if i go here and if i try to see the job the query right the one which i shown you last time expand it and if you see here now you will see this cache thing right we are storing something in the cache that is true but from where we are reading right now let's check again we read from the file system because this is the first time after enabling the cache this is the first time we ran this query right before that anyways cache was disabled now i will rerun it one more time and this time cache is enabled already right you know that again i'll click on view and i will click on associated sql query and i will try to see the same property the file system what is there see file system read right zero it means this time we didn't went to the file system and read the data where from where we read we read it from the cache cache hit size see and you will see in the bottom also these many files got read right and they read from the cache it cache it read byte see here parquet file so this is how cache works in delta table okay apart from this if you wanted to see again the cache io cache place you will see the data is cache so this is how data is cached in case of delta tables and they use it right you will not see much difference while i'm querying the data and it is giving the result as soon as possible right because i'm just running a simple query but if you start doing some aggregations right you will see the difference before cache and after cache you will see some amount of differences there so try it out and let me know if you have any doubts thank you thanks for watching this video bye